Hi everyone, welcome to Web Wednesday with me, Danny, where we talk about the web. Anything related to the web, this is the place to be every Wednesday. Today is the first episode and I want to dedicate this to installing Google Analytics on your website. If you don't know what Google Analytics is, please go and make a Google search and find out for yourself what it means and then come and find me right after this break. Welcome back. Today, we will talk Google Analytics. Obviously, you should know by now what Google Analytics is, and the purpose of this video is to walk you through how you can install it on your website. Let's get started. So in order to find uh, Google Analytics landing page, the easiest way is to just uh, type Google Analytics in Google and click on the link. Now, if you're using this for the first time and you don't have any uh, website associated with it, you need to sign up. So I will click on the sign up. And the first thing you need to do here is put the account name. I'm going to use my website name for that. And as well, website name is danny.net. Now, obviously, if you're using multiple websites, you might need to use an account name that is more generic. Um, so let's say I'm going to keep it at Danny, just in case I have multiple websites. And here is the trick. If your website is a secure website, make sure you uh, select the HTTPS right here and then type the domain of your website. If it's a normal website with no SSL, choose the HTTP. Um, sticking to HTTPS because uh, that's what Danny.net website uh, has security on it. Um, then you move to the industry category. Here's where you uh, choose what category best uh, fits your business. Uh, in my opinion, uh, my own website would fall somewhere under online communities or most probably arts and entertainment or business. Well. It falls under a bunch of them. I'm gonna keep it as, um, let's stick to internet and telecom. It's kind of interesting because um, really they don't, let, let's stick to internet and telecom for now. And then here's uh, some options for you to select or unselect. Um, Google products and services. Would you like to share some of your analytics in order to improve product linking? I'm keeping this unchecked. Uh, for benchmarking, I like to keep this checked. Basically, if I keep this uh, checked, Google would share information about businesses in my category uh, and the benchmarks around those numbers. So that will be useful at one point. Technical support, of course, if you need uh, to give access to Google uh, to help you. Well, you can check that later if you want. Account specialist, give Google Marketing Specialist and Google Sales access to your analytics so they can find ways to improve. Well, for now, I'm keeping this unchecked as well. So the only one I'm really caring for is benchmarking. Let's move to Get Tracking ID. Uh, next, to use Google Analytics, you need to accept terms and conditions. So I'm going to scroll all the way down and click on I accept. Wait for a few seconds and there we are. This is the magic ID or tracking ID that I'm looking for. And um, I need to use this in several places. So there are two ways of implementing this and recently uh, in November 2017, uh, Google introduced um, what is known as the global site tag or the G tag. And it's a new implementation that allows for more uh, control and functionality to uh, go across multiple Google uh, services, such as AdWords and uh, other services as well. So if you want to be up to date, you uh, have almost, you have no option. You have to uh, grab that code, 
One way of implementing this is to put it inside of the header of uh, your website. So if you're using a WordPress, you can go to header.php in your template file and um, copy and paste the code into the head part uh, of, of the header. As well, there's another implementation if you're interested, and this is the implementation I would like to go with, which is using Google Tag Manager. And for that, um, there's going to be another, uh, another video uh, of how to use this, but um, here's the thing. Uh, you need to grab this instead, the tracking ID, because this is what you will need uh, when you're doing the Google Tag Manager implementation. So just to summarize, there are two ways. You either grab this code and paste it into uh, all of your pages using a template, of course. So you can go to the header and paste it there, or you can use Google Tag Manager, which is again, a free tool by Google. It's a great tool for marketers to get their work done. And we'll talk about this in a different video. So that's it for now. I can really uh, do whatever I want. Uh, right now since I have the tracking ID. Let's head and create a new um, Let's go to Google Tag Manager now because this is the way I want to implement this So I'm going to select Google Tag Manager and go with sign in Again as you can see I don't have an account so let's start with um, set up an account. Uh, you can share data anonymously with Google and others. If you don't, then you can just not uh, check this box and go directly now to uh, type in the container name, which is nothing but your website uh, domain that helps. Select if it's a web, an Android or an iOS and click, uh, click on create. The usual stuff, accept the terms and conditions. And here you go. Now you have this piece of code and this piece of code, which you need to uh, add to your uh, pages. Uh, for my case, um, I'm going with this. So I need to go to my template and add this portion into the head part of an HTML template and add this right after the opening body uh, tag of my template. Here we are. By the way, if you lose track of where the code is, uh, the installation code for the Google Tag Manager, you can always go to admin and then uh, go here to install Google Tag Manager and it'll give you a reminder of what you need to do. So let's see. It's saying paste this code as high in the head of the page as possible. I'm going to copy this and this is the template for my website. Now they want me to put it all the way up here, um, even above the description in keywords. Well, I don't feel comfortable doing that. So what I'll do is I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle right here. That's great. And then this portion of the code needs to go immediately after the opening body tag. So if you scroll down here, you see the body tag. And just before the header starts of my template, I can just paste it right here. So that's about it. Now I can save my file and FTP it or whatever method you need to do to send this file template to your server. Now after FTPing uh, my template file, <clears throat> I can refresh my page and view the source. And as you can see, uh, my first uh, tag is right here and the second portion of it is right here. Now I have installed the Google Tag Manager on this page. However, I haven't installed uh, Google Analytics uh, a script yet. So the way to do this is simply, let me expand this a little bit here so we have more space. Um, in Google uh, tag manager and obviously if you are not too familiar you don't want to go too much into the technical part of it I'm gonna have it really quick here but if you need more technical uh, explanation I would suggest that you head into uh, another uh, website uh, which I teach you more coding scripts and I will have the link in the description below 
So Google Tag Manager consists of tags where you would put your, uh, your script and code. And this is my first tag that I'm going to create. I'll give it a name that this tag uh, should be called GA, um, or so that stands for Google Analytics uh, Page View, Page Views. You can say tracking if you want. That kind of tells us what we're trying to do. And then let's start by tag configuration. Now, here where you need to use universal analytics. Unfortunately, behind the scenes, though this is saying universal analytics, um, I believe that Google is now using the G tag instead because I don't see it as an option. So eventually, they will automatically migrate everybody uh, to the G tag if you do this. Uh, so I'm clicking on this. Next is the tracking type is the page view and uh, select variables here, Google Analytics settings, enable overriding in this tag. There you go. So here is where we need to add our tags. Now I'm creating this for the first time. I need to create a tag, which is basically um, a tracking ID. I'm gonna put the tracking ID in the form of a variable. So here is my tracking ID. This is what's interesting to me. Um, let's try and copy this only, be careful. And then go back here and you can go ahead and create a variable. Um, I'm doing, clicking on the new variable here and giving it a name of GA tracking ID. Okay, and then for the value, I'm going to have uh, to select here a constant because this is the value of this variable and hit save. There you go. Go next. I can leave these empty if I want. Only uh, fire this tag in published containers and we want it once per event. Um, that's fine. Enable custom tag uh, firing schedule. I'll keep this empty and fire a tag before we don't care about this. This is a little bit advanced. So for the sake of this example, I'm keeping this at only fire this tag in published containers. Uh, what that means is if firing this tag results in a fee being charged, you can avoid firing it in a testing environment. So that's good. Now, when do we want this tag to be fired? Obviously, we want it to be fired on all pages. So I'm just going to hit the all pages and click on save. Okay, and I think that we are pretty much ready, uh, as simple as it sounded, we are pretty much ready because we already installed the Google page view tracking right here uh, through Google Tag Manager. Let me just submit it. So basically I'm submitting my changes uh, to the version control and I'm asking it to uh, publish everything. And as you can see, this is part of what's called a workspace. And I have made two changes. Obviously, I've created a new variable called it GA tracking ID. And I've created my first tag, which is the GA page views tracking. And for now, all I have to do is give it a description here. So um, basically, you describe what changes you did. And I, I'm going to say created of the uh, GA page views tracking. You can be more detailed here if you care. Otherwise, you can just hit publish and we are ready to go. Now, how do we test all this? How can we make sure that our page is actually running the Google Analytics behind the scenes? There are two ways of doing it. Uh, the one that I really prefer is to use the preview right here. And that is uh, basically you click on it and it tells me now I'm in preview mode. So I can navigate to my page right here and refresh it. So universal analytics fired one time. That's good. So if I refresh, it will fire another time. Now that I have tracking set up correctly on my website, I can start using the reports that are here by Google and these are very useful. I will have special videos for each of these sections and you will be able to understand and dive more into the data. Um, 
Until then, I would like you to stay tuned, give my video the thumbs up if you like it, and in our next video, I'm going to um, go with Google's uh, recommendation for me, which is to set up Search Console. Search Console is a great tool if you're interested in learning how your website performs organically on its search engine. Uh, it used to be called Google uh, Webmaster Tools, and a few years ago it got renamed to Search Console. So that will be the topic of our next video. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you found it useful. Please tell your friends, share it on social, and also like it. Don't forget to hit the bell button and subscribe to my channel right now because I'm going to put more videos like this which will make your life easier and will teach you the things the easy way. If you like what you're seeing, please do that. Otherwise, I will see you next time when my video gets suggested in your feed. Have a good day. Bye-bye.